Now if the rubber is going to work, that's what happens when it's kind of like 40, the rubber rubber stops working. I'm not going to be able to get mine on, I'm going to try. That's fine. Yeah, it's tank, it's just, I think I can get mine on. This rubber is so brittle, I think I'm going to be able to work. All right, I think we officially picked the coldest day of the season to do some yard work. It is early February. We've got some amazing sunshine out here. I think we're just over seven hours of light right now. When we woke up this morning, we had some troubles with our propane. It was frozen. Thankfully, we have the wood stove, so we were able to heat up breakfast and have some coffee, of course. Eric's run into a few little issues out here too with uh, some other things, but he has started to fall trees for the future garden space behind me. Very exciting. Um, we're gonna hope to get our full garden put in this year. We've got the perimeter mapped out and we're also tackling getting some of our wood ready for next winter season. So we've got to make sure to stay ahead. Let's head over and see how Eric's doing. Oh, it smokes, it's cool. Done some nice work over here. Look at these trees. <coughs> Man, it's rough out here. Deep snow, cold weather. Nothing seemed to work quite as we wanted, but I was pretty shocked when I cut these trees down just how frozen they are. This is one of the ones we just cut down. And I mean, these trees are just frozen solid all the way through. It's crazy that these trees can survive up here. So we've got four nice big ones down. I think all this wood's just gonna go to our uh, firewood supply for now. And I mean, I'm almost there. I'm getting these all limbed up. Makes it a lot easier to fell them when you take all the limbs off like I don't know, I just go as high as I can reach, but let's continue with those ones and we'll see if we can get a couple more down. I mean, it's not even just a little bit frozen, it's frozen all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm gonna refrain from calling you any names. Oh! Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. You ripped skin, man. Why don't you just let, let me lick it off or something? Um, pretty sure I'm bleeding. What I was doing was I was trying to bite it to test how frozen it was. Babe, you're so... Look at that, my spit is frozen solid. After like three seconds. Is that a bubble? Learned our lesson there. Uh, 
It was rotten on the inside. Look at this, looks like a mess. We gotta clean this all up. We're gonna gas up the chainsaw. We're also gonna start the snow machine. I just wanted to show you guys something that's pretty insane that happens when it gets this cold. So I've got a jug of bar oil inside the cabin warming up. I think this is all season bar oil, but watch this. Open this one up. It's out here in the cold. <laughs> and I mean, I can see it in there. It is not moving. So something kind of interesting that happens with motor oil, bar oil, things like that. Let's get the Scandic fired up. It's gonna help us haul all those logs out of there and we'll get them put over where we like to cut our firewood. In the extreme cold, this machine is extremely hard to start. And unfortunately, the electric start doesn't work on it. So, let's see what we can do. Oh. Loosen her up. Hard to breathe. suckers are heavy so I'm gonna try to hook a strap to it give it a little bit of a bump see if we can get it moving and hopefully after that we'll have a, a good enough trail packed in that we can get the rest of it out of here As you can tell, it was a pretty cold day working out here. And it was a little tougher than I expected, honestly. We're gonna wrap up shop and just pick things up tomorrow morning, I think. We're gonna bring some treats to the chickens and I'm sure they will accept them. And right now, the little diesel heater inside the chicken coop, since it's so cold out, it has been running for 24 hours straight on level one. Let's take a peek in there, see how warm it is. It is currently 42 below.
That's chilly. Almost 38 degrees. That's a huge difference. Give the chicken some treats. I mean, that's like a 70 plus degree difference, but it's normally warmer than that in there. Huh? What's that? I said 70 degrees difference, but it's normally warmer. That's a huge difference, yeah. But it's normally warmer. This morning we are celebrating a rise in temperature of over 30 degrees. We are now sitting at 20 below Fahrenheit. Let's do this. Stuff's really sharp though. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. You told me that. You don't think any higher? When sure. he hops, does he put his head down and he hops and he goes? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. It goes like this. Well, now that we've got the fun out of the way, we're back to working. So Eric and I this morning, we're setting up some snowshoe hair snares. We haven't done this in a little while because the area we previously lived, the count of them was pretty low. So we weren't really successful um, a few winters back. And there are a lot of the snowshoe hairs hopping around here. And I've been seeing a lot of marks in this area. Um, it's pretty easy to tell which areas they favor a lot. Eric helped me with the first two, and then I have four more additional snares set. And we just kind of try to funnel them in an area that they're already traveling pretty often. Found that this wire works pretty well. So I hope that we can get one in the next few days for a meal. Eric's back at the cabin getting the Scandic ready for some more woodwork today. Did you make it? Yeah, maybe don't go that way though. Okay, you wanna hop on or? Which way are you gonna go, man? I'll go this way, that way we just went. Looks like we've got the trail packed in back to the tree and we're just gonna bring one sled back there. It's really tight in there and the snow's pretty deep and there's a lot of snow on the tree actually. I didn't even recognize it. Let's head back in there and see if we can get it. She is. That's her. Oh no. Let's see which one will work today.
design on it? Good? I'm good. Good morning, we woke up to some beautiful skies this morning and we got a snowshoe hare. So this is actually our second snowshoe hare that we were able to get yesterday morning. Eric got one out too, it was actually caught on its front arm but thankfully we got it. We have plans for dinner later tonight with these but today we have a little project. We're gonna be working on a dump trailer that we just got used. We've been keeping our eyes out for one for the upcoming spring season or summer season with the garden. Eric and I just do not have the spirit that we once had to uh, shovel tens of yards of manure and soil like that. So this should definitely be a, a advantage for us this season. It's been a few days since the cold snap. We are out of it now. It feels like spring. It's just warm. I don't know if we're at zero or so, but it just feels really, really nice. So a good day to work outside. Let's stick it in there. Put the snow off it. Now slowly lift it up and put it on the edge. That actually be perfect if you want to line up the other ones right there. You wouldn't oh, even yeah, have to that cut looks, that. That looks perfect. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Wow. You want me to hear something for you? What a difference 50 degrees will make on the body. I feel like we didn't really get used to that extreme cold, but I guess we feel that it was pretty miserable working at it. So hovering around zero, it's, pre it's feeling pretty good today. And this dump trailer is gonna be just a huge part of this season. That garden is gonna take so many loads of compost, uh, dirt, everything we have to bring to build a garden of that size and we're going to try to do it in the spring so we can actually garden this year ideally we probably would have went with a little bit bigger of a dump trailer but we were limited to the size of our pickup so our tundra it's a half ton the towing capacity for a half ton is pretty good on it but this is a five by 10 and it's a 10k trailer so it can haul 10,000 pounds including the weight of the trailer this one weighs a little under 3,000 pounds and what we're doing is we're going to put these sides on there so I think these are like maybe like 16 inch sides and we're gonna do it around the whole entire thing and that's gonna give us a little more capacity when we go to haul uh, like soil or dirt or anything like that. I believe we're gonna be able to fit about four yards in this thing. We've got two of the sides done. We're gonna do the front and then the back's gonna be a little bit different. The back is gonna be like easily removable. So when you dump this to open up those back gates, you'll have to take the back piece of wood off. It's turned out good so far though. Let's get it done. Not bad. Head to the bone. He's looking like a professional was here. Okay, you want to stick this tooth through for me? Yeah. yeah. Ready to go, bro? Oh, well, watch out.
Well, it turned out pretty awesome, and this whole entire thing, except for the back, is extremely solid. So the back is meant to be able to come out like this. So we'll get home with a load, pull the back out, you can throw it down, and then this does a few different things. The tailgate will like uh, drop down. If you want to unload that way or fit longer material in here, the tailgate will also tip so you can spread gravel. And then what we'll mostly do is just pop like this, and then it opens like that. You dump out your load and you go get another one. And with this back section, I mean, it's pretty close. Not absolutely perfect. This you can tell kind of wiggles. What we'll do is maybe I'll hook some sort of hooks here and this will get bungeed down. So it kind of sucks it in there when we're driving down the road. And then we've got this little bit of a gap here. I don't know if we're gonna lose material off that. We've got the mesh net that kind of covers the whole thing. But if we do, we'll maybe put maybe some mesh in here or maybe another two by eight. I don't know, we'll just kind of do trial and error with it, but let's see if the battery's charged enough and see if we can dump this thing. So the way this jump trailer is set up right now is you have to charge this battery that runs this little hydraulic pump and that's what dumps the trailer. So it's got a big 12 volt battery. I think in the future I might hook it up so when we plug it into the truck and we're driving, it also charges the battery. But for now, that's how it's hooked up. Let's see if she's got any juice in her. Pretty awesome. I mean, it's still gonna be a lot of work getting all this material for the garden this year, but having this dump trailer, I feel like it's gonna double our speed and being able to get our material out here. So then it's just gotta power down. And it goes down. Pretty awesome trailer. That's it. Pretty slick. Head inside and make dinner. Good day I out here, huh? Really good, honey. I got it done. It's a nice looking side. Oh, let's measure it real quick. So we can get the final, so we can get our final capacity. So the metal sides, let's get rid of that snow, are exactly 18 inches. That's how tall the metal sides are. With our wood, we're at 32 and a half inches. 10 foot long, five foot wide. I did the calculations before, it's, it's over four yards. So it's gonna be awesome. Okay, man, that thing looks good. We're simmering down inside. We've got our hairs cleaned and processed. We are going to be making one of my favorites, which is pot pie. So we've already got our pie dough ready and that chilled outside for quite some time. We're almost ready to roll it out. Eric got the hairs divvied up into some smaller sections, more manageable for cooking. And I wanted to show you the uh, pelt is what it's called. So this is the second one. I have it, it's all like wet right now, but I'm gonna kind of splay it out like this one and put salt on it and dry it out and we're gonna have a nice little bunny or hair pelt and they are super beautiful and super soft we're gonna be braising our meat tonight so we're gonna get started on that behind me It took a little while to brown all of these in this uh, Dutch oven, but they're looking pretty good. I forgot to mention that half of this, or one rabbit, or hair, is soaked in milk as per a tip from my dad. We wanted to try that, we've never tried it before. Um, so it actually sat in milk all night long, and then I just drained it this morning. They're all mixed up now, but I'm sure we'll be able to tell the difference uh, when we get them out of here. And we're going to add the vinegar in just a little bit. The vinegar and chicken broth is what we're gonna be braising it in. So this is dandelion vinegar that we made a long time ago. And I've yet to finish it all. And then we've got some chicken broth. And then we're gonna add our spices and just let it cook down for probably an hour or so. Moving on to the pot pie filling, we have potato, 
carrot, celery, some sweet bell peppers and or some sweet little peppers and onion and then we also have some mushroom i've got them rehydrating in milk these are those yellow foot chanterelles that we have yet to pick for like two years but um we still have a bunch of them and they are delicious and then we're also adding some whole garlic cloves this garlic i thought was pretty interesting this has been pickling or uh, preserving in vinegar for almost a year now so we did that last year in march we're gonna cook these until they're just about done Everything's coming together. We've got a little bit of flour browning in there with the meat, the mushrooms, the milk, and we have strained that braised liquid uh, from the snowshoe hair. So we're gonna add a little bit of that in there too and get a nice gravy going for the pot pie. Just the right amount. Well, I may have gotten a little carried away on the crust. It's super thick, but I really like pie crust a lot or pie dough. Once it's cooked, we're gonna make some vent holes in here and then we're gonna hit it with a wash. Get this in the oven. It has to cook for a while and we are going to be having a very good dinner tonight. Cheers. Yeah, okay. It's a, a taste of snowshoe hair. I think that that's the way to cook it. Low, I mean, not low and slow, but long. Not to what? Yeah, it's got a real vinegary flavor, huh? But I think that that's what makes the meat less. Rabbit's always really good. I mean, it's not my favorite it's wild not game, favorite. especially like small game. I like grouse a lot better. Honestly, I'd squirrel better too, but rabbit's pretty good. What about porcupine? You like that better too? Here's <laughs> mm. the rock. The other one tastes like steak. Yeah. I like grouse the best too. Man, look at that crust. Whoa, that's the best. It's a very 